welcome to another episode of the God is a Geek podcast. My name is Chris White and joining me this week is Mr. Gary Bailey. How are you doing, my friend? I'm very good, thank you. How are you? I'm um, not too bad, mate. Not too bad. I've got a treat for you as well because Mr. Nick Gillum's here as well. How are you doing, buddy? I'm a poor second place compared to Gary, apparently. Poor second place. <laughs> no second place for a team you here. You introduced me second. I mean, come on. <laughs> Save the best till last, that's what I say. <laughs> Um, so, I mean, we've got we've got quite a few games. Obviously, it's a very quiet time in terms of big releases, but that doesn't mean there's not some little crackers uh, in the mix. Um, we're going to start off with Captain Toad Treasure Tracker, which Nick reviewed and has been playing. Um, so, yeah, give us give us a little bit of a rundown. What's it What's it like? I'll try and keep this brief, otherwise it won't leave mushroom to talk. Oh, God! Oh, I got that right in there. He's here. Um, It'll be good for these segways. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, um, Adam brought up my Captain Toad up last week, didn't he? And of course, he, he referred to it as cake. And he's very well versed to actually do that because it is just like cake. Everyone likes cake, apart from maybe celiacs, but you can get um, particular cake <laughs> for them. ones, yeah. Um, but it's, oh God, it's lovely. I mean, I played it on the Wii U and I think I only got up to the first Wingo fight. I mean,. Uh, the Wii U was a great was a great machine. No one bought it. Um, and one of the issues I always have with playing on the old on like the PlayStation Two, and I went back to play old games and um, the Wii U. Is the fact that I, it was hard to bring myself to play games. So I didn't have achievements or trophies or whatnot because mm. I'm shallow and I I don't see much reason to play stuff these days unless it's got something that rewards me for it. Um, but I did like Captain Toad, but because other things took my attention away, I didn't really play it through. Yeah. So it's quite nice that they brought it back for the Switch. Uh because it's lovely. It really is. I mean, I love Nintendo's work in design because everything's got like a feel to it. It's got like a a sense of heft, a sense of place, a sense that it's it's always been there. Yeah. I mean, you'll play like Uncharted and while the locations are lovely and it all looks really solid, you'll have a section where there'll be like a bunch of rocks full and it's almost like that that oft repeated Star Trek scene where Kirk throws this boulder at this sort of lizard alien thing and you can see that the rocks made of styrofoam and all the rocks have all this floaty sensation don't they in most games mm, yeah everything in Captain Toad has a has a feeling like it should be there like a tangibility and I love that about Nintendo's work and all these little locations they've created they all fit together nothing seems out of place and because they've had to do these levels in such a way that Toad can't jump, you have to guide him, everything feels so, just so right. Mm. It's, I mean, the game's not with its faults, but God, bloody hell, it's lovely. What's the, um, like, have you tried it on 3DS? I've tried the 3DS and the Switch version. The 3DS version's amazing. Yeah, they, that's, you that's good. Believe that's good to learn. You won't believe how close it is to the Switch version. Wow. It's only 30 frames a second, but that's not a huge problem with a game that doesn't really require Twitch reactions or anything. Yeah. Um, but it looks, apart from like a bit of anti aliasing, the obviously the, the polygon detail is slightly down, the texture detail isn't quite the same, but other than that, you are getting the exact same experience as the Switch version. So you, regardless of which one you get, you are not going to lose out at all. Yeah. Are you, is there like, a, is there a need to bring it onto the Switch? You, I mean, obviously, I'm not saying there isn't or there is, but I'm just, just curious, like, because obviously a lot of Wii games didn't get the right exposure because, as you said earlier, no one bought the, the Wii U console. So, you know, is it, is it good to have it on the Switch so more people are going to get to play it? Yeah, because not everyone owns a 3DS and not everyone owns a Switch. So bringing it to both machines mm. means anyone who didn't necessarily play it on Wii U but now has one of either of those can play this absolutely lovely game. Yeah. Gary, do you ever have a Wii U? I did. But I never did you ever played play this. this? No. No? I, Any I inclination played... to play it? Yeah, at some point. Because I, I played the, I was, like, the levels that were in the Mario 3D world and they were fun. And like I believe this is kind of more of the same, but bigger and know, like a bit more substance, I suppose. But yeah, yeah I definitely like to try it at some point. Yeah, and in, in, in your review, it mentions there's some. Is that Super Mario Odyssey theme levels? 
there's only three of them. Yeah. It's a bit of a shame. You you still got to play the the regular Toad. He gets Captain Toad levels. There's a, there's a whole set of those. Then you've got some Toadette levels where the same opening sequence plays out. Then you play as Toadette for a bunch of different levels. Um, you still fight the same bosses, though. And then you've got Captain Toad and Toadette levels before you then get to the bonus ones. Mm. And that's and in true Nintendo fashion, that's when it starts getting really difficult. Um, they actually open with the Odyssey theme levels. And these the levels they create in this game, they're nice and compact. Well, most of them are nice and compact. Some of them are quite sprawling um, tracks that you have to navigate uh, normally, sometimes at speed. Um, but the ones that are self-contained, uh, they pack so much detail into these tiny little spaces. And a lot of the time you think to yourself, where have they hidden this thing that I can't find? Because you think you've looked everywhere. Even when you've angled the character under certain arches, you think, I can't find where they've hidden this. The Odyssey thing, there's only three of them. But oh my god, they really have packed these tiny little spaces with so much more detail than all the other levels. Mm. There's, I mean, the the sand, the sand Kingdom level, which is the first Odyssey level that you do, um, you get through to the end of it, and you think to yourself, where's the star? You pull this lever, and all of a sudden, the whole level just changes. And it all become, it goes from day to dark, and I, I honestly don't understand how they managed to take this tiny little space and just completely jam it full of stuff for you to find. But that's just Nintendo's design philosophy for you. Do you reckon they yeah. put in, like you, like, you could tell these were oh, like more detailed and better because they were built for the this new version, like whereas the rest of the game is essentially just like a port. Um, I don't. They still follow the same philosophy. They still follow the same idea that you are in or you're in a small space and you've got to find particular items. Well, you got you're still looking for an ending item, but normally it's a star. And the Odyssey theme levels, you're looking for a power move. So they still follow that same, go from point A to point B, where the final thing is, find everything else in between, and after it all, we'll give you a couple more bonus objectives. Yeah. It's a, but they've, it's like they turn around and said, right, we've got these levels, we're not going to include a lot of them, let's just, just chuck a load of stuff in there and see if people can work it all out. <laughs> hmm. I mean, it's, it's, we can go read the view on on uh, the website, but it certainly sounds like a very fun little game, and it seems to be keeping in with what Switch constantly seems to be doing. Um, Gary, yes, Gary, 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 Gary's racing game hour. <laughs> We're gonna <laughs> Gary's just gonna talk now for a solid hour about racing games. Um, we're just gonna How many of these opinions are gonna be bad? Listen. Well, who knows? He's already it's, starting in on it. Yeah. Well, do you know what, though? It, it's got, my it, meme. It's my meme. I came up with this meme. <laughs> no one's credited me for it, but it's my meme. <laughs> um, what have you been playing, guys? A bit of like everything, really. It's one of those things that kind of... i just got on a bit of a racing game kick. I think it sort of started going... Like, when I got the, the new consoles... It's like, what's the stuff that'll show it off? And it's like, okay, you've got GT Sport and Forza 7. And it kind of spiraled from there. I just started playing a load of old games. Well, not old. There's still like this gen and stuff. But yeah. like, went back to like Project Cars 2, uh, which I, I, I adore. Um, I even went back... Well, it kind of fit in nicely that Codemasters brought um, Grid Auto Sport onto backwards compatibility. The Xbox One, and like, oh, yeah. I love the Grid yeah. games. The like, the original Grid is still one of my favourite games of all time. It's an absolute stunner. Um, mm. I think it was possibly the game that kind of started like my my love for racing games. Like yeah. before, I'd played some, I enjoyed them, but that one was the one that I put so many hours into. Um, and then like Autosport was just the latest one, and really enjoyed it and it's great to go back to it and I forgot how brutal it can be I mean you're playing against the AI and it still does the whole first corner smash that you get online because it's obviously it's not as good as stuff like the Gran Turismo AI from yeah. sport that kind of thing um, 
And the other one that I was playing, the one that I've started playing a bit more of was F1 2017. I mean, I know the new one's out next month. Um, I'm intrigued by it. We'll, we'll kind of see on that one. I've got a bit of a bit of an, an open mind, just with a little bit of doubt. Just we'll see anyway. Yeah. Um, in, what, but, in what in what way though? Well, that- the the problem I had like the main issue I had with last se- last year's game was it was basically the same game. You know, like they they added in the classic cars, and it was like, oh, cool, but it was just the same thing. You know, like whereas. I don't know, I suppose, like, stuff like FIFA, they added in, like, the journey, and, like, Pez added in the um, My Club stuff, and it kind of changes things up a bit. Um, whereas this was just, here's your F1 season, but now you can race a few, basically, arcade races in yeah. classic cars, and it was just, I, I don't know, it just feels like it needs more. Um and one of the things I keep saying that I just I don't think it's going to happen is where you've got like other games, like you've got Project Cars to uh, even like the MotoGP games that kind of thing. Mm. They start you on the career um, lower down in the like the rankings kind of thing, like uh, other disciplines. Um, like for example, like the MotoGP games start you off in oh, I forget what it's called. It's like Red Bull Moto. It's like an amateur division kind of thing. And yeah. you work your way up through like Moto 2, I think it is, and then to Moto GP. And one of the major things in F1 is like the drivers come through like F2 and GP3. And I just think they should be added. At least one of them, maybe. Uh, you know, so you, you're, yeah, not, yeah. you're not I'm just ra- not. Yeah, it's like you're not just racing F1 cars, doing the exact same thing every year. Um, but, sorry, this is a bit of a sidetrack, really. Um, <laughs> That's right. Like, I went back to 2017 because it was enhanced for the X, and I kind of, it was another one where I was like, let's try it out, see what it's like, and it's bloody impressive. Um, like people might have seen on my Twitter the other day, I just put up a couple of shots that I took from it, and it's stunning. You know, I just I didn't realise how good looking that game is, um, especially like the weather effects. Um, yeah, I mean it's absolutely gorgeous, and I started to have a lot of fun playing it again. Though, just rather than going into the career, I was just playing just random races and just then enjoying whatever happened. Um, but yeah, it was just kind of a nice teaser to see before going into the new one and seeing if it's improved, which mm. I hope it. I hope it does, but I'm just not sure. I'm uh, I'm, pre- I'm praying for you, Gary. I'll, I'll... <laughs> I've got to ask, Gary, what is it you see in racing games? Because I've, I mean, I'm, I'm similar thing to first person shooters. I've played a few, and none have really clicked with me until Destiny. Which, but I have a feeling that's more to do with loot and me being an RPG person. Yeah. Racing games I've never been able to get on with. Um, I think I've, I've played Wipeout a few times. I've never really stuck with it. I think at one point I was playing Gran Turismo and I remember uh, me and my cousin were trying to do a series of races and we tuned up a Nissan Skyline to a ridiculous degree. <laughs> this is back in the 90s. It might have been the very first Gran Turismo game. And I remember us both jumping for joy when we when I finally managed to win a race with a great drift around the final corner. <laughs> but other than that, I haven't got this relationship with racing games that I can actually dedicate any sort of time to them what is it for you that actually does this um, that makes you actually want to play them oh I just it's weirdly therapeutic because it's just like I I mean I watch a lot of motorsport and that anyway I enjoy it in much the same way as like people who like football or like Pez and FIFA or I can't even think of any other like stuff like Madden you know that kind of thing when they they like the real sport they like playing the game the games it's a similar thing where it's like i i've watched a lot of the st- the sport i know a lot of the tracks as a result as well so it's kind of nice to drive around those tracks um i mean it was cool when i played um project cars because that was the first one i'd seen alton park in and i've been to alton park so it was kind of nice to see you know a a venue I've been to. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's just, I say, I just enjoy driving around those tracks and 
learning how to take the corners a bit faster with each lap and I mean, d- depending on the game, it's the like sort of the thrill of the actual race as well. Because so- sometimes it's not as fun. Like one of the issues I had with Forza Seven was the AI is just I don't. It's far too harsh, I suppose. Um, a bit too aggressive. Like you can turn yeah. the aggression. There's like a basically a, a switch for toning down the aggression or not. Even when you switch that on, it's still too aggressive because I mean Forza 6's drive avatar AI was really good you'd get the odd bump and stuff like that but that to me that's what racing is you know yeah. mo- most racing so, there's some form of contact here and there and it sort of kind of makes me think that with, with regards to drive avatar they should have like licensed that for every single Forza game and just had a little disclaimer at the start saying your tr- your race data will be included in our AI simulations for other people's games is that okay with you and they just like to keep it rolling forward, so they don't actually have to code their own AI. Yeah, I suppose it, I suppose they'd still have to, unless they made the games online only. Um, I suppose you'd have to have some form of AI, but I'm not sure on that one. But it, it's a it's a really good idea. It was just for some reason something about Forza Seven's AI just was just too aggressive, and I don't I, you know I I can't work out why. It's just suddenly it's smashing you all over the place. And Maybe you're just getting soft in your old age, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe so. Uh, I don't know. I've got <laughs> a comeback both... for that right now. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, we've got, you're we've still got... younger than me. Yeah, yeah that's true. You um, you posted some screenshots of The Witcher as well. Yes. Was that this week? Yeah. <clears throat> I only went back briefly. It was just like, again, you know, I'm I'm still I'm still in the honeymoon period, you know, with the new consoles. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I don't blame you. Yeah. I don't blame I you. Mean, when I went 4K, I did the same thing, mate. I saw every bit of 4K content that I could to see how good it looked. Yeah, and... it's, it was the same when I when you you went in first went to like HD. One, it was like the last generation. Like you first went to HD, it's like oh that looks good. Let's see what everything else looks like now. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean, The Witcher Three is absolutely gorgeous. Um, I mean, it's a beautiful game anyway. I, th- I think we all know that. But just, I think especially Tucson, which is the Blood and Line area, and DLC yeah. area, that was especially colourful anyway. So now that they've added HDR um, to the the PS4 version, I'm ass- I assume it's all on the Xbox One version as well. Um, it's absolutely beautiful. Um, it's, it's funny though, isn't it? Because they added this 4K HDR support for Witcher 3, and that runs better than the um, best graphics mode on Red Faction Guerrilla. <laughs> Very much so. I still don't know what's going on with that. I've I've tried it since, and they've updated it, but they've still not fixed that. So whether oh. that's something that isn't going to be fixed, or that maybe they're in the process of fixing it, I don't know. But I'd like to think they will, because... I mean, it looks it looks good, but it doesn't look as good as, say, Horizon or God of War, and they don't have that kind of issue. I mean, okay, they're first party, so you'd expect them to run better, but I don't know. It just seems like something's not right there. Like maybe maybe, maybe it's it, a, a a thing you with look the at engine. Other games though, as well though, and other games that aren't first party, and they don't seem to have this issue. Some that's do, true. but yeah, that's not true. All of them again. I mean, Project Cars too. That. That doesn't have it. That doesn't have that issue, and that's third party, and that looks great. And runs I mean, great, Witcher so. Three, CD Projekt Red. That while they are, while they're well known, they're not exactly a massive. They're, they're a triple A studio, but they're not a massive triple A studio. They mm. don't have the same resources as a EA studio, for no. instance, do they? Well, that's that's what's so impressive, I think, about the Witcher Three is that, I mean, it's it's still a fairly big team, but nothing like the ones that make stuff like Call of Duty or any of the like Uncharted games and things like that. So the fact that they've got this massive game made it... I mean, it had it's had bugs over the time, but, you know, every game does, especially the big open-world games. I mean, look at Skyrim. You know, it's still... <laughs> it's still probably the biggest open-world game there is, Skyrim, in terms of, like, sales and stuff like that overall. Um, even how well-known it is. But it was... 
massively buggy. I mean, I think we all remember the PS3 version being, well, just utter shit. Because oh, it, yeah. it, it, it was... F- I, I don't even know if it ever got completely fixed or not. I don't I think don't... PS3 and Game Boy ever got on, did they? No. Mm. Um, but yeah, it's like the fact that the wit, you know, the Witcher had a smaller team and everything, and they made this incredible looking game that ran well and had so much good in it. And then they released those two expansions as well, which were like a fraction of the price of other DLC and produced like 10 times the amount of content. I, I still haven't played them. I've, I've literally played Witcher 3 for probably about five hours and I haven't gone back to it since because uh. I'm just a terrible person. <laughs> I, say, I mean, I, I didn't pick it up till, I want to say it was about eight, ten months after the game came out. For whatever reason, I just, it was almost like I, I wasn't jumping on the bandwagon, you know, like kind of thing where everyone was playing it, saying how good it was. I was kind of like, eh, I'm not that bothered. Even though I liked The Witcher, it's just, for whatever reason, I just wasn't bothered. And then when I finally picked it up, I want, it was, I think I got it for about 20 quid. Um, and I was like, you know what, at that <laughs> price, I'll give it a go. And then just played it solid for weeks. Um, then went and bought the season pass like straight off the back of that and played like the first one when that came out and then as soon as blood and wine came out i jumped into that and i think i mean i'm not not like some people who have put like thousands of hours into these games but like i've probably put about 100 hours into the whole thing for me that's a lot of time not many games I paid seventy quid for the bloody thing, and I've played it for like five, <laughs> five or so hours. So I'm, I've, I'm averaging like eleven pound an hour, which is just, <laughs> which is ridiculously bad value. Uh, I'm, well, I'm, I'm happy at the uh, what forty quid I spent and got the whole lot. So yeah, don't I'm... rub it in. <laughs> well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna refrain from talking about my next game. Uh, I'm gonna move to Nick, who. <laughs> <laughs> well, we get... Sorry, that was a Do good we get one. It? That was a good one. Oh, bless you. Um, <laughs> oh, sh- I've just, I've just got it because you said that. <laughs> I said refrain. Boom. Yeah. Shining resonance refrain. Is that correct? That is, that is correct. Yes. So there we go. Um, you weren't a massive fan <laughs> of the dialogue, but but how how is it as a game? Um, as a game. If you're playing it from a purely gameplay standpoint, which some people might, um, there are people who think JRPGs are the height of video game writing. They'd be wrong. Um, <laughs> it's the the actual actions very very good. Um, it's, it's a very sort of tales like game. You wander f- around a large area. Um, you come across an enemy. You then enter into like an arena sort of thing, and you fight against these enemies. At which point it ends, you get XP, you get drops. Um, the actual battles themselves, you've got two attacks. One, because I played it on Switch. Um, I'll get to how it looks in a minute because mm. it's actually quite impressive on Switch. Um, the I think it's the A button does your main attack, whereas your whereas the X button does a thing it's called a break attack. Um, which it looks, it's just like a regular attack. You can chain it into a combo. Um, the whole idea is that that attack itself has a higher chance of breaking the enemy you're fighting and when you break an enemy the enemy becomes more susceptible to higher amounts of damage um and also they it can stop them from casting and they become incapacitated for a while so when you're actually fighting a big powerful enemy and you manage to chain successive breaks together that is a very rewarding feature of the game and that makes the actual action itself very very good um, it's just a shame. The story is absolute fucking rubbish, and yeah. the the writing, whether it's a fault of localization or it's actually very very bad writing in itself, um, is just plainly awful. Um, but we can come to examples of that in a minute. But the way it looks, even on even in handheld mode on the Switch, it looks lovely. Um, there's not a lot of rough edges. The art is stunning. Um, the main the menus have a little bit of lag to them. Whether that's an issue with the RAM and the on the Switch itself, I don't know. Because you'll go, you'll go from one screen to another, and there'll be an obvious pause while the machine loads its its next menu. But the actual character designs, while being your usual overly busy Japanese RPG fare, they're very good. Um, there's some 
rather distasteful uh, alternative, shall we say, character designs for the ladies. Um, so if you're playing on public transport, you will not want to engage the swimsuit models for the female characters. Because that will get you some very, very funny looks on public transport. <laughs> um, other than that, I found it very enjoyable. Because it, it is a good game. Um, in oh, Sorry, I, I was going on about the looks for a second there. Uh, you play it in docked mode, and to be honest, there's not a huge amount of difference between that and what I was watching of PS Axis stream of the PS4 version. It looks very, very similar. I mean, yeah, granted, it's a I think it's an old PS3 game that's been rejigged for the current consoles. So there's no surprise that it runs on a Switch. Um so it's and it's obvious, obvious that there, there's not been a huge graphical upgrade between the PS3 and the PS4, but it does look very, very nice. Um, yeah, it's it's all right if you can look past the dodgy dialogue. Mm. <laughs> yeah, we go go and check it out. Um, so the Banner Saga three. Now I'm not, I don't want to talk too much about it because, well, for one, I can't. But I have played the the pre. I mean, there was a preview that went up that followed three of the chapters, so I could talk about those three chapters. Uh, and have any of you played them before? I, have, the, I uh, haven't played any of the Panasaur games, so okay. please don't kill me. No, I've, no, no. Um, I mean, they're they're on, like, they are on the Switch now. They've come out recently, so I'm going to keep the story down to a minimum. But essentially, the last two games up until now have followed. This war between the humans and the dredge, um, who are this weird, cre- these weird creatures, and this darkness is setting in this world that's threatening to take away the light and plunge it into darkness, that kind of thing. Um, good versus evil, same same old kind of story. However, it's like Game of Thrones. But him, it's like Game of Thrones. Yeah, I was just about to say it's very much like Game of Thrones in the in the sense that, well, when a game tells you your choices matter and you you play those games i mean there are some ex, ex, like life is strange that that does you know your choices do affect that and the, some of the telltale ones do but ultimately there is always an end game for it this there never has felt um you know what's going to happen and wouldn't do, your decisions really kind of make an impact there are there are times in the previous two games where you've had a character with you for a while and then you you make a decision which at the time seems minor, and then seconds later this character's dead and you're just like completely taken aback by it. And it is it's brutal, very much like Game of Thrones, and the whole feel to it is is that kind of darkness. And as we approach the final season of Game of Thrones, you you feel very much like it's it's ending, and and that's what Banner Saga Three does as well. There's real kind of finality to it and the 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 kind of story is leading somewhere incredibly dark um and it's just, it's just engrossing it's such a good story and the the writers are fantastic on it and the the music as well which has been done by austin wintry who does a load of games you know journey that kind of thing yeah but the the gameplay itself it it always kind of stays the same but there are always little tweaks to it like th- this this the kind of main tweak to the gameplay in this is the there are like waves in battle. So normally you would have a battle where it's, it's like a game of chess. It's turn-based, strategical, but it, it feels very much like a chess game. The, the squares appear on the board. You can move in certain directions depending on the character you've got. Um, but the, the battle would always end once all the other players had died or all the your players had died. Now, if, if you kill all the... Play, like the the enemies on the battlefield, another wave will come into play, and you can choose to to run or fight the next wave. Um, so you can't heal yourself. However, you can swap in other players in your party if you want. Um, and if you manage to get through the waves, whether it be two waves or three waves, um, you'll get a, a special item at the end, which could be a new weapon or a new um, item that you can, you know, use to boost stats, that kind of thing. So it does kind of does kind of play a role and it does make battles even longer and sometimes people might not be into that but that that's that's what this game is the battles you feel like you're going through it like it's such a kind of i'm not going to say visceral i'm trying to find another word um yeah visceral's overused these days isn't it yeah so it just kind of 
you know you're rooted in the battle and you you need to kind of persevere and you you feel like you're up against it there's a lot of pressure on your shoulders and you know every battle is like that and they the the battles can you can have one of these battles that last for three waves and then a minute later you're in a, another battle and you're like oh for god's sake but then there are times when you go quite a long time um without fighting and there's a lot of story kind of fills through so the the three chapters that i played are fantastic and a great prelude to what um or what i am currently playing for review but those three you mean if, if you really love the other two then there's no reason why you're not going to love these because it's just absolutely fantastic um and i, I can't wait to play more so that was me before i move on to the last game we're going to talk about i just want to briefly mention a, a game for the switch i've been playing for mikhail's um brainchild the switch report uh, and that's lost in harmony um it's basically uh, I don't know if any of you have heard of it but it's a uh, The name like sounds a, familiar. No, I remember I remember seeing the video of it a while back. It's yeah. like a you you either you're heading away from the camera you're heading into the camera yeah. it's like a rhythm action game you're on yeah. skateboards or something like yeah, that. Yeah, that's exactly right. Um it's a runner game where it's the the characters are running towards you and it's a, a rhythm game as well. Um now I'm not I'm not a massive fan of runners. I do quite enjoy rhythm games but I would never have picked this up. However, the music is just phenomenal. The The soundtrack's been put together by a load of different people. It's got the guy who did the soundtrack for Monster Hunter, um, a lot of kind of influences on JRPGs, musicians that worked on those. And then very randomly, but also happens to be one of the best songs on the soundtrack, is a song that Wycliffe Jean sings on. And it's like, I haven't heard of him for ages. That's like a but, natural fit, oh, surely. Um, I remember the news about this now when it first when it first got announced. I remember why Clef was involved. Yeah, like oh, it's, I just remembered. It's like I haven't stopped listening to that song, and and because the story that kind of is tethered together by these different levels, like it's essentially this kind of teenager called Kato, um, who's got a friend called Aya, and she she it's never explicitly stated what's wrong with her, but it's very clear it's it's something like you know terminal cancer. And they communicate Jeez. between the the levels via text message. So the the only kind of story you're getting is on these text messages. So early on, she'll say, "Oh, I'm I'm going for treatment," and he's like, "Oh, I could come with you." And she's like, "No, don't worry about it." Um, and then you kind of be like, "Well, when you get out, we'll we'll do this, or I'll we'll go here or something." And then it'll stop, and it'll go to a level which is inspired by that conversation. So. Some of the levels are insane. Like one one conversation they have about technology. One of the levels you're jumping over, like um, you know the image for liking something on Facebook, oh, or yeah. like the ad friends, those kind of images. Um, and then from left to right, the Twitter bird flies in, so you have to dodge that that kind of thing. And it's very kind of clever with with how it interprets the the conversations you have. Um, and I mean, as it gets further and further, it does get a lot more difficult, but when you when you get to the end, it's it's well, it's, well I can't really say, <laughs> but it's very hard hitting, and it's it's a game that I wasn't expecting to like, but it's it's pretty pretty cheap, I think, for what it for what it is. So it's certainly worth giving it a go. I mean, it went to it was on the phones first, and then it went to PC, and now it's on Switch, and it it plays really well on Switch, even when it's docked, it just looks really nice. Well, back um, in the day, I think it was me who actually posted the news item on God Is It yeah. Game, actually. Well, I, I think I mean I think you'd like it a lot. Um, it's a it's a really lovely little game that I kind of wasn't expecting to to enjoy as much. Um, but Pode, we'll we'll talk about Pode because this this game looked lovely. Um, and I mean, we, we we get you got it for review, and there was a point where it got really difficult. Um, now, is is the whole game? full of those moments or was it kind of a one-off that it was actually that difficult it, it was very unclear where you were supposed to go um I've, let's preface it with a little bit of something else first because when when pod was when, when we got um code for pod hey um <laughs> i i had just come off the back of playing mario tennis aces which is a in the adventure mode is a frustratingly hard game um, and I also came off the back of the Octo expansion for Splatoon 2, which is also punishingly hard. So I was after something that was actually going to make me relax, and um, to begin with, Poe did that. Uh, and then the Poe's, you're a tiny little star, 
and you're a boulder and you've got the two characters and they're so sweet to look at they've got these tiny little eyes and um it all looks very very nice and they navigate these little rooms that they're in they're not they're like little puzzle rooms you've got to work out how to use their abilities um to make plants grow and how to make because there'll be certain like areas where you've got to shine because each character has a shine move when they put next to something they either make something grow or they activate a switch or something like that and that's how you get through the levels Mm. and as you go through the levels the actual solutions to get through them are fine they're fine they're easy to figure out and it's quite relaxing there's no threat at all which i quite which i quite like and then you get to the end of each section's area there's a like there's a, like a door puzzle at the very end and in each of these there is a mural that tells you what you're supposed to do but it's so bare bones that a lot of the time you'll sit there and you'll scratch your head thinking i don't understand that mm. what am i even looking at and i i think it was the first four times that happened because i've I got to the first one and I got stuck. So I went the other way because you can you can you can do these two at a time. So you can go one way and if you get stuck, you can go back the other way. So I did that. And when it got to the end of the other one, I was like, I'm stuck again. I can't figure this out. Um, So I waited. And I kept going back and I kept retrying over and over. I was getting really annoyed because I couldn't figure out what was going on. Um, Until eventually the whole bloody thing clicked. And the first four sections took me so long. When I finally got past those, and I got to the final, I think, I'm not sure if it's another four or another five, um, I breezed through them. Absolutely mullered them. Because they, they were just so easy compared to the previous ones. The only thing was, there was one section where the level's completely shrouded in darkness. And that is the puzzle. you just got to be able to navigate in darkness, which I think is a bit cheap because it's not really a puzzle. It's just yeah. stumbling around until you find something. Outside of that, though, God, it's a lovely game. There's, it looks lovely um, where the plants all bloom and all the crystals shoot up the wall when Boulder ro- rolls over the right areas. And I tell you what, there's a lovely little thing because if you're playing with somebody else or you're playing alone, doesn't matter which one... Um, the left trigger on the controller um, will control both characters at the same time. So you can make them move around if you want to keep them together. Because when they do a, a simultaneous shine, the area is larger and it, it, it just makes things happen quicker. When you get them together, right at the end of the level, and you stand them next to each other and you hold that button, they hold hands, which is very <laughs> sweet, and they walk <laughs> off to the next bit. And it's like, ah. <laughs> And I've, I've, I've made sure I did that every single time I went to the next level. It's so sweet. Um, and it's it's very saccharine sweet. So if, if you've got an, an, an allergy to that sort of thing, if you don't like things being too happy, you might want to avoid it. But if you can get past the sort of rather bizarre obfuscation of those closing puzzle rooms, it's very, very nice. And I would recommend it. It's not exactly expensive either. It's mm. a lovely game. Um, it's just those tiny little frustrations, very small. Hmm. Um, right. Well, news time. I don't know how many of you are excited about the Fortnite season five patch, but it does come with some interested news. Um, the motion controls, uh, are now working on the switch, um, auto fire on mobile and the all terrain cart. So the, if you go to our website, you'll see, them all the patch notes um but yeah basically the addition of all terrain carts in battle royale uh, which will let you go all over the place with your mates which i think is a is a great addition and the motion gyro controls to fall on switch um anyone's anyone interested i still can't get into fortnite i tried no. i tried i couldn't i couldn't do it um my son's pestering me. He wants to play it because a bunch of his friends play it. Yeah. One of the kids on his football team plays it. He knows all the dances. He does them all the time. I go to his football on a Saturday and he will he every now and then goes in goal and 
he will stand in goal, and while the ball's at the other end of the pitch, if I look over at him, he's normally flossing. Uh, he uh, likes the dances. He wants to play it. He wants me to download it and play it so he can watch. But because it's got all the shooting in it, and I know it's cartoony, I'm not comfortable letting my eight-year-old play it. And as I said, I've tried playing it, and it, it just hasn't clicked with me. It just hasn't. Gus? Uh, I don't know. I, I've not played Fortnite for quite a while. Uh, I think the last time I played it was possibly when me, you, and Adam played it. Wow. It's, yeah, <laughs> I, I'm not 100%. I might have played it since, but I, I don't remember playing much of yeah. it. Um, I kind of, I kind of, over the last few months, I've got back into it. I, I bought season four. I probably won't be getting season five, but I do like going back just to dabble in it, you know, to kill like t- 10, 20 minutes and have a few games. But I mean, I, mean I, I, I do that with Rocket League, so I can't, I can't do it with anything else. So. I do, yeah, I, but that, I do feel like I should enough. go back to like because I want to go back to PUBG as well. Um, I've not played that for a while. I, I kind of yeah. feel like I need to go back and play both of these, and even maybe um, H one Z one a little bit just to see mm, how they, yeah. how they've all moved on a bit since the last time I played. Yeah, yeah. We, we, I mean, I wanted to kind of get a video for the Thanos thing when that went live. Um, for the site, but it's just time, isn't it? Yeah, we all we all have full time yeah. jobs. We'll try our best for you guys, but sometimes it just doesn't work. At some point, um, we'll, we'll have to try and like rearrange it. Oh, well, not rearrange. Oh, yeah. actually arrange. Um, I think we should. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, another like uh, maybe a stream or a video or something for. Yeah, definitely for something like well, definitely for Fortnite. Maybe for PUBG. I mean, let's face it; well. it's incredibly popular, so we probably should do, but. It's it's just getting the time to get everyone together, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Um, Call of Duty Four, Black Ops Four, multiplayer and blackout beta dates have been announced for PS4, Xbox One, and PC. Um, we've got the PlayStation Four on August third, uh, Xbox August tenth, uh, PC beta early access starts August tenth as well at six pm BST. So, anyone going to be playing this? No, no. I mean, I, I'm interested in the battle royale on that as well. Is that what blackout is? Yes, because that's Cause yeah, I don't, sep- I don't fucking clue. September is that one? The, the, yeah, why know. not? Eh? <laughs> oh yeah, it, yeah. It just says. Oh no, in, you're right. You're right. Yeah, yeah. just set, just set <clears throat> September. No actual date for that bit. Yes. But I, it's like this and Battlefield. I'm kind of intrigued at how how they handle the battle royale. I mean, yeah. Battlefield has the destruction, so I suppose that's that's where that'll kind of change things up a bit. But Black Ops, I don't know what it'll be, because if it's just Call of Duty, but with bigger maps. Yeah. I, be- I believe there was something around the other day saying it's only going to be about 60 players, rather than like the 100 you, that other games oh, have Call, used. Call of Duty is? Yeah. I'm, I'm, mm. I, I, want, I don't want to sort of say that as fact, because I, no. I can't remember where I read it. Um, it could have just been a lot of shit, it. you know, as we know. <laughs> um, but yeah, I just, I just don't know what they'll do. I, I, I'm interested to see what they do. But if it's just, yeah, if it's just Call of Duty, but essentially a massive version of it, I, I, I'm, I don't get it. Basically, I mean, yeah. they've, got, they've got to be putting some effort into it. They've got no single player, have they? So yeah. they've got to be putting some effort into getting this into some sort of form where everyone's going to want to play it. Yeah. Otherwise, everyone's just going to stick with Fortnite. Mm. I mean, I'm very excited to see Battlefield's uh, Battle Royale mode, if anything. Yeah. Just because I think it's a better game all around, really. But we'll see. We'll see. There's there's time uh, left for, to see some more details on that one. Uh, Warhammer Vermintide 2 is out on Xbox One and Xbox Game Pass. Now, you reviewed this, didn't you, Gary? Yeah. So good. It's awesome, isn't it? Such yeah. a good game. So we should all be playing it. Yeah, well, I, I said it in my review. I've said it. I've said it plenty of times since. It's just like everyone's waiting for Left 4 Dead Three, or just you know lamenting the fact that it's not happening. It's just like it's already happened, basically. Yeah, yeah. But instead of you know your zombies and Lou, you know, was it Lewis who just kept shouting meds and stuff? Yeah. Um, you've got you know. <laughs> Dwar- a dwarf with a massive axe and shit like that, you know, and you're <laughs> fighting Ratman and yeah, there is undead in it as well, I suppose, but it's it is it is Left 4 Dead, 
just in the yeah. Warhammer universe, and it works so well. Yeah. Everyone should be playing this. Yeah, I'm definitely going to give it a go. Um, Code Vein is now a 2019 game. Was anyone surprised? No. Not after well, I, I watched the E3 footage, I was like, this just looks shit. Like, I'm absolutely. a little bit like, surprised. Really? Sorry, yeah. sorry but I'm a little bit surprised, because let's face it, Bandai Namco, they... With regards to their anime-inspired games, I'm not. I don't know whether Code Vein is based on anime because I'm, I'm sort of away from that scene to a degree now. So I mainly read manga. But um, normally, when they announce a game, they'll announce it, and it'll normally be out within the year. Um, I think I think Jump Force is out before the end of the year, isn't it? And that was only announced at E3. So think, Code Vein yeah, was. We were year, talking about that last year. So I'm surprised it's not out this year because normally these things are pumped out pretty quickly. Mm. Well, maybe that maybe it was one of those things that they showed it off at E3. People got to play it and were just underwhelmed, or maybe they had more problems with the code for people playing it or something, and they've just realised right, we need to sort something out. Um, yeah, possible. But, yeah, but yeah, possibly. I, mean, I just thought it looked dull when I saw the footage of it. I was like, this doesn't doesn't even look fun in any way. Mm. I think, Do we know who's developing it? Because it kind of looks a bit like a Dimps game. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, I'm, not, uh, I'm just going there now. Yeah, just da-da, I, I think. Dada, dada. Oh. <laughs> no, dada is developing actually. It's just Bandai Namco publishing. <laughs> no. So at the minute, yeah. sorry guys, everyone's listening. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Dark yeah. Souls I, I Switch, I, I, no news I, on that either. Yeah, that is a bit of a weird one because it's like it was supposed to be summer. It's like we are officially in summer now, and uh, it's nothing. Well, mm. if you look if you look on Amazon, you'll see the release date's been penciled in as the first of January, twenty thirty. So they're not <laughs> they're not hopeful, are they? <laughs> <laughs> oh God! Uh, yeah, um, yeah. Well, well, it's nothing. Not a surprise, is it? Uh, Ronda Rousey is going to be a WWE two K nineteen pre order bonus. Which I'll be honest, I am a bit surprised that she's a pre order bonus if she's on the actual main roster. Yeah, I was going to say she's like like she's part of the roster now. She, she's part of it, yeah, and she's. Well, she, in the storyline, she's been banned from Raw, but she is she is a part of it, and she's apparently going to be at Extreme Rules, so she signed the contract. So, I'm obviously, like, with all the pre-order characters, you can tend to buy them afterwards, but yeah. I just feel she should be a part of the main game. I'd rather see someone else as the, the pre-order bonus, but hey-ho. Um, WWE, K- blah, 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 blah. WWE is not also coming to Switch either. Um, which I'm, I'm not su- surprised on that one to be honest because I don't think the last one did that well, did it? No, and and and, and the, the the actual console release was bugged to hell, and it needed it needs more focus on on the console one to be able to even consider going to the Switch. Yeah, I don't think you should release a half assed you know game like that on the Switch. No. It, was, it was bad enough. It, well, I say bad enough. It wasn't terrible, but there, just, there was just a lot that needs working on these games at the minute. Um, and with the Race of Fire Pro Wrestling at the end of the month, that's the wrestling game I'm going to want to be playing. Um, that's the to... one they released on Switch, isn't it? Well, not Switch, um, Steam. Yeah. yeah. It looks and like I... it's, it looks ridiculous, but it also looks like I really want to play it. I'm, I'm pretty <laughs> oh, sure yeah. I played a game like that back on, was it the NES? There's an isometric wrestling game where you had wrestlers in a ring and you could throw each other. Oh, the yeah, ring. there was, I think yeah. that. The first, it, it the was first a WWE game, game, I think. It was just the first game I ever, yeah, the first game I ever owned on my NAS was that. It was <laughs> WWF WrestleMania Challenge. That's it. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, and I'd like Andre the Giant and Ultimate Warrior and Rick Rude. I mean, it was, oh, yeah, again, like, it was ridiculous, but it was great fun. Yeah, but this, I haven't this, played this... a proper WWE game since SmackDown on the PS One. No, oh, that's it. That's how you don't need been. to. They were the best. That, I think that, some, some of, of the best. Kind of says it all. I think it's like the last game either me or Nick played, like WWE, was actually WWF. Yeah, <laughs> it was before yeah. it's even changed the name. Yeah, I mean, the it? last time I really watched WWE was when it was still in the Attitude Era. Um, yeah, it's been a long, long time. Yeah, man, it's struggling at the minute. But that's a different story. Um, <laughs> Monster Hunter World on PC, August the ninth. It's a no-brainer for me. I think people need to play it. Um, Still not I played hope... it. Well, that's not true. I've played it a little bit on PS4 at Friends, and it seemed quite fun, but I've not it's, played it's it weird. to any degree, any real degree. Because it is, it is a game that, for the most enjoyment, needs to be played with friends. Yeah. Um, and, 
like once one of you falls off it, the you, no one else will play it. I mean, I haven't been back to it since we've kind of playing it with like Adam and yeah, cause I remember uh, you, Adam Carroll and a few off the it. site like Chris Hyde and yeah. Dane and that kind of thing. Like it was it was ace. You know, we had a really good time, and then we all kind of dropped off a little bit. I mean, Mick is a trooper. Yeah, like he's he's still bloody cane in it, and and that's that's great. You know, so there, there's a lot to it, and I think people that don't own consoles they'll, they'll be playing this. They've got to. It's fantastic. And Mick, Mick was still really playing Destiny. He was yeah. really disappointed with Destiny 2. I think that's probably because Monster Hunter World came out so soon and he he just really got into that, mm. didn't he? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, the last bit of news was just basically it was put in an Instagram post by Mr. Nathan Fillion. Uh, and <laughs> There's a picture of Drake, the hip-hop artist from Toronto, and... Um, something about Uncharted, an announcement for Uncharted coming soon. So, I mean, the obvious guess is that a film's in the works and Fillion's a part of it. Now, I, I think, I don't know if he's too old now to play him, but he's a very good match. Imagine if they, imagine if they put him in it, but he was actually playing Sully. Oh, yeah, that, God. That, that just like, oh, I could Drake, just imagine... Drake, the... Drake, Drake! <laughs> It'd be awesome. <laughs> if you're asking someone to play Drake himself, I'd probably go with Paul Rudd. That's not a bad oh, shout. That's not a bad that shout. That is a good shout. That is a good shout, yeah. I mean, he's he's getting his acting, his action chops in quite a lot these days, isn't he? Especially yeah. with the Ant-Man films. Yeah, so, I think him or Chris Pratt. Like Chris Pratt would be, a, I think, a good one as well. Because he's already got the... Yeah, I think, like, I think his features are a bit too boyish looking. I don't think he grows stubble well enough to put him into that role. Plus, his hair's too curly. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Chris. Sorry, Chris Pratt, if you're listening. Which, obviously, you are. Oh, yeah. Obviously, you are. Hey, you've got a big fan base, mate. All of Hollywood. Yeah. Um, <laughs> list of correspondence time. Now, the questions we've had this week are... Really, really good. I'll I'll be honest. So, some from Discord. Um, I'm going to put this question out there. Hideo Kojima has a ridiculous fan base. Why? Because he's ridiculous. Because he's ridiculous. Next. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Good point. He is. Yeah, he is ridiculous. I still but... don't understand it. Because it's like, well, I understood it like earlier. You know, when like you had like Metal Gear Solid the first one, um, and then like the second one got a little bit of slating, but it was. To me, it was still really good. Three, everyone loved, but I, I didn't get on with, which I'm sure will shock nobody. No, I'm, um, I'm with you. I'm with <laughs> you to this point. I completely agree with everything at the minute. Uh, it all hinges on what you say about Sons of the Patriots. I mean, I, I really liked Metal Gear Solid. I loved it. The pontificating got a little bit too much in Metal Gear Solid Two. I loved Metal Gear Solid Three. It's one of my favourite games ever made. Um, Metal Gear Solid Four got a little bit too preachy once again oh, but it has one of the best scenes in gaming the one on the boat the, the, the radiator it was radiation the actual scene. guns of the patriots scene oh god where an ocelot's doing their whole just finger guns and it's just everything's going off i'm like that's just fuck. and <laughs> the, i mean to be, to be fair to the guy actually i don't think anyone else could get away with an hour and a half cut scene in the middle of a game no, i mean was it was a- literally an hour and a half yeah. I think no, no. I think that one was an hour. I think the ending was an hour and a half, and yeah. it's just like no, nobody else could get away with that. Um, no. But I mean, I I just didn't get on with five at all. I just thought I the the open world stuff I didn't mind, but it didn't feel like Metal Gear in any way. Like yeah. not even like oh, this is like the next step of Metal Gear. It just didn't feel like Metal Gear, and no. I just I couldn't be bothered. I finished yeah. the main part of the of the, of the first part of the story, and I started the second bit. But when I started having to do the original missions with the little remix parts, I couldn't get past the fact that I didn't want to do that, yeah. and I actually yeah. had to do it to unlock further parts of the actual story. <laughs> yeah, really grated on my nerves. I'm no, got, I completely I'm, agree. I'll probably piss more people off as well, but I just thought uh, PT was boring. You know, like everyone went mad over PT, saying it's like, oh, it was shit scary and everything. I was like, it was all right in terms of the scares. It had a bit of atmosphere, but it it was just boring. And I know it was like a, a tech demo, essentially, and a proof of concept, but it was just... It 
didn't have anything to do with Silent Hill. You know, it didn't even like feel point, like it was part of me Silent and Gary Hill. just agreed on something. It's very weird. <laughs> it was like, you know, <laughs> hey, you know, if you want to finish the demo just so you could see a little trailer, you had to do all that really ridiculous, stupid shit. Like, what was it? Like, you had to blow into the microphone or something at certain points and you had to yeah no you're right yeah. you had to go you had to go on youtube find this video with hideo kojima talking play that bit into the <laughs> the the playstation controller but then before then you had to wait till one of the clocks in the in the hallway turned to a certain time then you oh, did that fuck off seriously yeah it was yeah. it was just yeah it was stupid. it was it was it was mental that's a load of bollocks but that was the thing i mean i'll be like i'm <laughs> I'm a huge Silent Hill fan. I'm still waiting for Konami to do something. Um, you know, as are we all waiting for them to do something with pretty much anything other than Pez. Mm. Um, um, pachinko machines, mate. <laughs> pachinko. <laughs> but it's just like, when I found out that Kojima was involved, I was like, no, please don't. Because it's like, I'm, as a game developer, I think he's 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 definitely brilliant. You know, he can do amazing things that you know others will only follow but as a as a writer of a, of stories fuck off <laughs> just quite honestly he just writes fucking nonsense <laughs> uh, like even i mean to be fair, you know to be fair like so like the metal gear games are just 100% nonsense but it kind of works for that setting oh, you know I, I do i do adore him though but yeah I- I mean, I I love those games, and like I say, unsurprising to nobody, me and Nick don't agree that on Metal Gear Three. Um, <laughs> but <It's> yeah, you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, but yeah, just yeah, I don't I don't get the undying love for Kojima. I mean, when they showed Death Stranding finally, we still no closer to knowing anything about what the game is. You're a delivery man, from what I can tell. <laughs> That's just the stupid thing. It's like, everyone was like, oh, one of my favourite games of the show was Death Stranding. This was like two years ago when all they showed was like this little concept demo or whatever it was. And it was just like, how is that your favourite? It's basically because Kojima's involved. And because of the whole thing of the whole fuck Konami, whatever it was... You know, people were like, "Oh yeah, we'll we'll all stand with Kojima. It doesn't matter what he does, basically, yeah, just because it's that. really, fuck that I movement. really dread to think what the budget for that game is, considering the names that are involved in it." Yeah, that's it. They've got some I mean, massive I, names. I bet in you it. anything they he because they're using the same engine that um, Horizon Zero Dawn used, aren't mm. they? Yeah, I bet you anything they've licensed that to his studio for free to make sure that they deliver something on it. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. Quite possibly. Yeah. Um, next question from McPoo. If you had to invite four video game four video game characters around for a dinner party, who would you pick? See, that's a very good but tough it's an a- question. Excellent question. Whatever you do, do not invite Nathan Drake round. He will shoot everyone in a heartbeat. <laughs> yeah. That yeah. guy's got a body count like you wouldn't believe. Like it's a bit like dinner- hot shots. <laughs> <laughs> you mean Hot Shots Part 2 surely yeah well that's what it's so pedantic so, <laughs> hey that's me <laughs> dinner party or like down the pub the, I, I don't I, I don't, don't really th- know I don't think he'd mind like I, I don't think he'd mind the uh, the context in where we go as long as there's four video game characters okay McPoo if you listen I hope you don't mind but we're going to slightly alter it to a night out with four video game characters <laughs> Let's let's go with something incredibly left field just to find out what the fuck happened to your career. Let's go Bubsy, um, <laughs> Zool, Leisure Suit Larry, and Gex. There that, you go. Mate, that'd There's be one a conversation for you. What evening. the fuck happened to your life, guys? <laughs> oh, man. I could just imagine them just sat at the bar, just drinking whiskeys on the constant, and then just throwing up into a gutter outside at the end of the night, having to carry them home. Oh, they're not going to be having a good time with us. They're going to be miserable. <laughs> I'd like to invite like villains, it's just to sit, you know, like like Bowser. Just be like, why do you, why do you constantly just keep kidnapping Peach? 
What's wrong? She's what obviously not in your you, life right? that made you do this. You know, <laughs> I feel like he'd give the same kind of speech that Wreck It Ralph does. Like, just because I'm a bad guy doesn't mean I'm a bad guy. <laughs> he just wants love. That's all he wants. Yeah, he just wants. And then, and I thought they were going to do it at the end of Super Mario Odyssey. I was like, oh my god, what's happening? <laughs> we're I really see thought Lady she Belva. was. Yeah, but um, no, Bowser's a good shout. I don't really know. Like, I kind of think Duke Nukem would be fucking. <laughs> I'll tell you what, though, going, going back to that, wouldn't it be great if Peach had a so- certain thing like Fiona from Shrek, and after dark she becomes a great big spiky turtle, <laughs> yeah, monster thing, and yeah. she likes Bowser at that point. Man, that's a that's a game there. I'm gonna get in contact with Nintendo. Make sure no one steals that. <laughs> That'd be really good. <laughs> That could be the second Odyssey. Boom. <laughs> anyway, you got to do your four characters now. Oh, hang on, Gary hasn't done four yet, has he? I, I don't. I don't know. Yeah, Gary. Uh, Jill Valentine, just because she's one of my favourite characters. Yeah. Uh, Siri, I think, from what? The Witcher. Oh, not, right, I not, thought you were not about from the, the iPhone. Apple system. <laughs> Apple, Siri. <laughs> uh, Siri, would you like a drink? <laughs> a drink. <laughs> I yeah, she'd just, she'd just Let me tell you about what the nearest bar. She wouldn't tell you what she wanted. <laughs> <laughs> um, so who have I got now? What, Bowser, Jill, Jill Siri and, and Bowser. Siri? Wow. <laughs> oh, I don't know about a third. Uh, uh, sorry, a fourth. That's four, uh, yeah. Hmm. I might have to, you might have to come back to me on that one. Right, I, I don't think Chris is ready. Yeah, that's the problem. I'll, I'll just, I'll, I'll just pick any. <laughs> Duke Nukem. I think it'd be good to start with, but I think he might get a bit racist towards the end when he's had a few beverages. <laughs> so I won't, I won't want him kind of going off on one. He'll be throwing um, money at he, every he woman keep, he met. He would yeah. keep grabbing your hand, Chris, and asking you if you want to dance. Yeah, <laughs> and who knows? I might take him up on it, and you might shake it, baby. <laughs> yeah, hopefully. Um, who else? Uh. 2B. 2B from Near Automata. Which one was 2B? Was that the the main girl? Yeah. Right. I'm not going to go into why. (laughs) (laughs) Um, (laughs) Who else have we got? I don't know. There's there's like... What about Doom Guy? (laughs) Oh, Doom Guy. Be a stunning conversationalist. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, he'd be fantastic. (laughs) Yeah, there you go. He's my fourth. (laughs) <laughs> oh, he stole him! I thought you were giving him to me then. <laughs> You've got Duke. Fuck. I'll tell you what, though, Gary, your your dinner party night out on the piss with these characters would be fucking shit. You've chosen the worst conversation that you've ever could have fucking chosen. <laughs> yeah, it's not. It's um. Yeah, but at least yeah, at least go. if anyone started on me, I'd have like the best people around me. Chris, what about the guy? From Far Cry 4, the guy in the purple suit. Oh, what's his name? Summit Min. Pa- Pagan, Pagan Min. Pagan, Pagan Min. Yeah. Joseph. Joseph. Uh, what's his face from... What are the names in Far Cry 5? Joseph Seed. Was it Seed? Seed. Oh, was Seed. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, that was, he the was... Clan, it was like the clan. It was their name on it. Yeah. I just couldn't stop thinking of Colum. It just reminded me of Colum. Not not in his accent, but just the way he looked. So every time he came into a scene, I was just thinking, oh, imagine if Colum was here. <laughs> but um, yeah, no, Joseph Seed, he, he was well interested. And his sister, Faith. Um, anyway. I love the I love the quick like um uh, moving on. <laughs> I don't right. I know I I know the video game characters, right? But we're getting to a day and age where they're they're like the the kind of voice act is that impressive that you can't help but uh, find them attractive. But there you go. That's, that's a different <laughs> that's a different time. <laughs> um, Twitter. So uh, at Rotten, it's Darren, good friend of the site. Um, what has been your favourite ever gaming peripheral? Um, E.g., flight stick, fave controller, wheel, or the Kinect, etc. Mm. I'm never. I've never been a peripheral kind of fan, but I always used to love the Super Scope. Because that yeah. was like my first I think... step away from just playing the video games with a controller. Yeah, I, I liked the. Um, is it the Guncon Three? I think it was. Oh, it was you on the... bastard! You stole yeah. mine. And it, that, <laughs> like, but that one was great because it had the little D pad on the back as well, so you could was actually that, that play. One, was that one games. with Time Crisis? Or was, uh, was that a different one? Yeah, it came with Time Crisis on PS2, I think. Yeah, but I, I like uh... I used it mainly on uh, Resident Evil Dead Aim. 
Oh, because I'm thinking of the gun con that came on that came with Time Crisis on the PS One. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. This was like the, yeah, the next one yeah. on. It might have been gun con two. I remember the <laughs> the control scheme allowed you to use a controller as the yeah. pedal to duck as well. Yeah, I remember that. Amazing. Because on the very first level of Time Crisis on the PS One, I played it so much, I had a ninety-seven percent accuracy. I was deadly with that bloody gun. <laughs> There's a sound bite. Um, Stolen mine, you bastard. <laughs> <laughs> gonna, I think keep, I like, keep talking. I'll come up with something. I liked the um, the speed wheel, you know, that came out for the 360. The one that was just it was just a wireless wheel, but you know, yes. it was like motion sensor. That was that was impressive yeah. actually, because yeah. when it first came out, I was like, no, nah, that's not that's gonna be shit. But a friend of mine was given one, um, and he was like, I don't play racing games. Do you want it? I was like, yeah, cool, thanks. And I played it, and it was so, so responsive. You know, like you, I expected it to be awful because you know what motion sensors were like then. It, yeah. Like the Wii, the Wii was kind of like the the first one that did it with, well, a decent amount of success. Um, that's another one actually. The just the Wii remote, especially with the uh-huh. especially with yeah. the uh, the plus. Motion Plus on it. That oh yeah, that was very I've impressive. Got one now. Yeah, very. I've got one now. The original Guitar Hero controller. Oh yeah, yeah, that was good fun. I I played. <laughs> I mean, Guitar Hero came out towards the end of the PS2 lifespan, so it sort of like bridged the gap between the PS2 and the PS3. And I remember getting it, and I thought. This game's fucking fantastic. <laughs> and I played that game to death. I got the second one. I played that to death. Oh, I just remember clicking those buttons away to Dragon Forces through the fire and the flames. I was the only person who actually managed to finish that song on medium, let alone getting any <laughs> higher. And Beast and the Harlot as well. I was playing that thing was beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. I loved that thing. Yeah, I know. Good shot. I know someone on like, on Twitter replied to this message. Uh, I I apologize. I don't remember the name, um, but he was saying the um, oh, Steel Battalion controller was his favorite. And I like you know what actually that's it's a damn good shout because that was ridiculous. Well, the funny thing about that, right? Because I remember everyone going on about it said, "Oh yeah, it's lovely and all that," but it makes the game too expensive. It's like a hundred and fifty quid. Oh yeah, is it? And nowadays we've we've had Mick. Post on our Slack about that four hundred dollar Darksiders free yep. edition, and people are probably going to go, "Yeah, well, I'm going to get that." When the hell did games not become expensive well, anymore? That that I kind of get. That I mean, I I don't think they should have done that version. If I'm honest, uh, considering this is a game that you nearly didn't get made, but it is three like high quality statues. So it's like if you think most of the time they're like a hundred quid each anyway. When three you get high these quality editions. statues that soon become three high quality bookends. Well, that's yep. it. It's, <laughs> it is. It is very much for very particular collectors. Where it's like, I mean, there was a time when I used to collect stuff like that. I used to enjoy, you know, like the statues and that. I've still got my um, is it Alduin, um, the you know the Skyrim, Skyrim one. Yeah, I've still got that. I, I, I've still got the uh, the the Big Daddy from Bioshock as well. Somewhere. Oh, um, the people who want this are the sort of people who make one hour long YouTube videos ranting about bollocks <laughs> with a great big wall of toys, video games, and models on their shelves behind them. You mean like Adam Cook with his amiibos? That's a bit different. <laughs> <laughs> That's a little bit different. He's got, he's, got, he's, he's, he's going to have words with me when he hears this. He um, probably will, and deservedly <laughs> so. But yeah, I mean, yeah, that, that controller, sort of going back to that question. It was. I mean, that game was ridiculously hard. I don't know if any of you played it. Um, just because you, you know, you'd have all these, but it was literally you had like a, a mech control system in front of you, and there was an eject button, wasn't there? Yep. And, and it's just like the stuff, you know. You had. I think if I remember right, you had a little, you know, like the plastic flip up thing with a switch underneath. I think you had like that for like switching on the the mech and stuff like that. And, it was really cool, and it was a really great mm. idea, but the game was ridiculously hardcore. You know, like, unless you devoted many, many hours to learning it all, yeah, you weren't going to have any fun with it. But mm. as a as an idea, it was, you know, it was brilliant. Yeah, there you go. 
Um, and then again, you you get things like that now. You you can buy you can get Elite on the PS on the PC, but you can get like a lovely little joystick set that's got like a throttle on one yep. side and a Fra- great big joystick on the other. Friend of mine's These got things that. are so cheap now, and that thing yeah. costs that just over one hundred and fifty quid. Yeah. As a quick aside, like that, the first time I played Elite was using that kind of setup, at friends, and on the Oculus Rift, the the Dev Kit Two. And mm. that, that is the only way you should play Elite. <laughs> it was damn good. <laughs> I, I, I'm not a massive fan of VR. VR. I, I, I would like to try it better at some point, but that was fantastic. That game was made for it. Um, that's it, really. Quick aside. No worries. <laughs> uh, Thomas at LlamaFluff42 has asked, do any of you still support print gaming magazines? I subscribe to most of the main ones and feel it's still a treat and event for them to drop through the letterbox every month. I don't I... personally buy them anymore. No. However, I'll support them because I think a lot of hard work goes into them. I mean, we know a few on Twitter and Games TM is one. Um, obviously, Games Master. Um, and then like things like Retro Game are really cool because they, they, they dedicate a lot of time yeah. to working, you know, reminding you about a lot of great games that mm-hmm. aren't the obvious choices uh, when it comes to thinking back to yesteryear. So yeah, there's definitely a lot of good print magazines still out there, but I personally don't um, don't buy them anymore. Uh, when I go on holiday, I'll tend to buy like the iPad version of Games TM or Edge, and I'll read that. But yeah, generally yeah. I don't buy the magazines anymore. I don't see the need to because I literally consume news on such a regular basis i don't feel like i need yeah. to yeah i think i think that's it because it's like we see a lot of the stuff online now um whether it's through actually putting out news stories ourselves for the site or whether it's just looking at our site and others that it's it's difficult for the print ones to keep up um but they do i mean they do a fantastic job of doing so and Obviously, the the writing in is top notch. The reviews are brilliant, but yeah, I just I don't have the the time to be reading them now. I, I will say a lot more work probably goes into creating one of these magazines and goes to putting something up on a website, which is a mm. bit sad, really, because the, these magazines do deserve support. These are the people yeah. who laid the groundwork for us to be able to broadcast news on the internet because yeah. they. They created these things that people bought and made an audience for it. And yeah. now they're just sort of falling by the wayside because everyone's consuming internet based stuff. Well, that's it. The internet's kind of, I mean, this is a very sort of depressing thing, but the internet is kind of consuming a lot of physical things now. You know, you, you think of stuff like Amazon is taking away brick and mortar stores, you know, it's, or taking away from them, you know, the, a lot of places can't compete with the internet prices and a lot of stores close as a result and it's unfortunate it seems to be the way of things like the internet's come along and we've hit like the digital age and yeah depressing it's good it's it's good for for us (laughs) not the people that work in these places but you know it's the nature of things something always takes over and you know finds a way um but yeah, next question. Uh, Dale at Sir Dale Boy. Um, do any of you have a game that you'll play at least once a year? Every year, no matter how big my pile of shame is, I will always fire up The Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past. Sometimes I'll just play the opening. Other years, I'll finish the whole bloody thing. Good question. Oh, I, 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 well, Gary, is there one game like you'll play from start to finish every year or go back to just because you miss it so much? Uh, I mean... The, there's a like genre I'd say I'd, I'd constantly go back to certain racing games maybe not one specific one but you know just going back to the genre now and again yeah um, otherwise it's, it's probably the original Resident Evil or the, the remake you know it's a sort it's a game I absolutely love um, is it? yeah is it? yeah the, the I, fir- didn't, I didn't realise <laughs> I know you, you wouldn't know it would you? But it's like yeah, yeah I mean, it's, fuck, the, it's fucking magnificent. Uh, the first Resident Evil is my favorite game of all time, so I'm happy to go back yeah. and play. E- even if I don't play it all, you know, it's nice to just play a little bit of it. Yeah, here of course. And at some point, I will get back to the stream for two as well. So I'll, yeah, I, I enjoy that game. It's been nice to play a bit of that again, actually. 
Oh, do you imagine your face when Resident Evil 2 comes out? It's gonna, you're going to be so happy. <laughs> oh, yeah. You won't be able to leave the house for days. You won't be able to start because he's tenting in his pants. <laughs> <laughs> Nick? Um, I have to say, first of all, bravo to Dale for his choice of game. Legend of Zelda Link to the Past is an absolute masterpiece. Mm. That game, I've I've said it God knows, count, God knows how many times. I've tried to put my feelings into words. I've failed every single time when I've tried to write it down. But that game, there's not a single wasted pixel. It's an absolute stunning game. It's perfectly um, dictated. There's no, there's no downtime. It's amazing. It was my favourite game of all time. It, it, it's, it's been eclipsed recently because of a game that I never, that I never even considered that it would have happened. Um, I mean, it very nearly happened when um, uh, not a link between world. No, it's a link between worlds on the 3DS because that's basically a retelling of the same game, and that is almost as good as a link to the past. Um, but Mario Odyssey has eclipsed that because, um, as far as I'm concerned, Mario Odyssey is just absolutely perfect. It's brilliant in every single way. But to answer Dale's question, um, a game that I go back to every year. Um, I didn't really have one until recently. Um, I reviewed uh, Rocket League when it came out on the Switch, and then my son started playing it because I because he noticed it was new on the Switch. And when I pointed out to him that it would look better on the PlayStation Four, he started playing that. And okay. now, if I've got any downtime whatsoever, if I if it's somewhere around about half nine, ten o'clock, nearly approaching eleven. I will boot up Rocket League and I will aim to get myself a win, um, at which point it will turn into, now that was a good win, but I want another. Uh, and then it will turn into, well, we won that one, but I don't feel like I really partook, so I'm going to keep going until I feel like I've actually earned the win. And I cannot stop playing that game. It's I, That is the game that I'm going to probably keep going back to until they turn around and say, sorry, but we're turning the servers off. Mm. No, good choice. Um, uh, mine's The Last of Us. I play that every year. Um, I adore it. Um, well, there you go, Dale. Thanks for your question, mate. <laughs> fellow, fellow Derby brother. Um, Dan Murphy next. Now we all know who Dan Murphy is. Former Gozi Geek alum. Um, I haven't really played out this year. <laughs> what do I need to play? I was tempted to do it in his accent, but I didn't want to make it make fun of it because I love it. <laughs> I just didn't do. I don't want. To, I would do it an injustice. But um, just, to, I mean, there's lots of games that we've played this year. But could you pick a favourite you've played this year so far? Um, Iconoclast probably still up, right up there. Yeah, I need to play that. Uh, God of War. I mean, surely. Oh yeah, that has yeah. to be there, doesn't it? Yeah. Um. It's 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 a hard question to answer because you don't actually know what Dan's favourite sort of game is, do you? Pez, isn't it? If it's up to me, yeah, then you just play Pez. <laughs> I I would be turning around to him and saying, "Play Nino Kuni 2. which I need yeah. to have a word of Adam Zokes about at some point. But still, <laughs> um, I I would say Yakuza Six for me. Oh, that's, that's a point. Um, that's fantastic. You say Yakuza 6. Something I noticed today, if anyone's after a deal on the Yakuza game, Yakuza 0 is on Amazon for twelve ninety nine. dollars That's the lowest price I've ever seen it. So if you want an entry into the Yakuza franchise, there's your entry point. Oh, bloody hell. 12 quid to change your life. I would say go for it. <laughs> Definitely. Um... Well, that's it for the, the main podcast. Uh, if you're Patreon, we're going to do a little bit of chatting where you'll find out about what happened once when I walked onto a porn film set. But if you're not a what? Patreon, you're not going to know about this. So <laughs> I suggest you head over to patreon.com forward slash God is a Geek. Like, subscribe. Subscribe mainly and give us money. I want to um, find out if you were <laughs> naked. Um, but there you go. That's it for this episode of God is a Geek's podcast. Um Obviously, you can go and follow all our work on godasgeek.com. There's all our reviews, features, which we're hoping to get some more up on there. Um, and go and listen to previous episodes of the podcast. If, you, if this is your first one, you know, we all love games. We're all very honest and we get on and it's just a kind of good good environment to have a website Especially listen to on. the ones that I'm on because they're very good. Exactly. There you go. From the horse's mouth. 
So you, you <laughs> go and follow us all on Twitter. Uh, Nick's at NikeG1. Uh, Gary's at BlueFiori47. I'm at First Avenger83. And uh, that's it. That's been it for this week, guys. Thank you for joining me. Thank you very much. No worries. And we'll see you all soon. Thanks for listening, guys. Take care. Bye bye. <laughs>